One of the problems that I constantly hear about from a lot of researchers and PhD students is that they don't have enough time to write research papers, that they have too many things going on and as a result they end up working in the evenings, at the weekends and, you know, and the research papers never really get written, right? So that's why in this video I want to talk about my top time management tips that will help you to increase your productivity and write research papers for top journals uh, much more efficiently, right? Without having to work at the weekends, without having to work in the evenings, while, you know, maintaining a good work-life balance. So let's get started. So these time management tips that I want to share with you, they're really based on a lot of my own experiences as, you know, as a researcher from a PhD student. You know, I also have a full-time business called Academic English Now, where I help researchers and PhD students write research papers. So really doing research is something that, you know, I do in my free time, let's call it. It's a, it's a hobby, right, that I have might be a strange hobby to have, right? But research is not really part of my main job. Yet, I do manage to write, you know, regularly three papers every year for top journals in my field, right? And the, the way I do this is through really good time management, right? So, I want to share with you my top time management skills, and I'm emphasizing that they're based on experience because they actually work. It's not something that, you know, I've read about or thought about. It's something that I've actively put into practice and something that has allowed me to really succeed. And I think it will really boost your productivity as well and give you a much better work-life balance. So tip number one is to know what your goal is. Right? A lot of people are confused when it comes to the goals, right? When I ask my prospective clients, right, um, what, what, you, what is your goal? What do you want to achieve? People are like, I want to write papers. But that's just incredibly vague. Like, well, what sort of papers do you want to write? How many of them do you want to write? By when? You know, goals have to, have to be specific. They have to be measurable. Uh, they have to be achievable. And they have to be bound by time as well. So, you know, a goal like I want to write three experimental papers and one systematic review by the end of 2022 and submit them to Q1 journals in my field, that's a much better goal that we can work towards, right? So number one, clarify your goals. Um, number two, you need to identify kind of the intermediate steps that separate you from that big goal. And then you need to identify what actions you need to take to get you to those intermediate goals, which in the end will get you to those overall goals. And the reason for that is that like a lot of people, again, get confused along the way. They, they set a clear goal, but then as they start pursuing it, you know, all sorts of other things start happening and they, got, they get other ideas and they forget about the main thing. You know, they forget about the intermediate goals and they start doing actions that aren't really moving the boat forward, right? And that's a problem because then you feel like you're super busy and you don't have time. But actually, the truth is you aren't doing the things that you're supposed to be doing that use, you know, that get you closer to the goal that you set initially, right? So that's my um, tip number number two. Right. Tip number three is to block everything in your agenda. Right. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, sometimes I talk to researchers and I ask them, like, how many papers have you written, you know, in the last 12 months? And they might say, well, I've only written one and I don't have time. And, you know, I haven't written anything in the last three months. And I'm like, why? Well, because I had a lot of meetings. I have to supervise my students and this and that. And I was like, okay, did you ever schedule writing time? Like, no, 
Okay, well, then you've got the reason why you haven't written anything because it wasn't in your schedule. And if something isn't in your schedule, what's going to happen is that other people will schedule that time for you because other people will assume that this is your free time and you don't have anything important to do in that time. So your colleagues might schedule a meeting. You know, your students will want to see you um, to get some supervision and like all sorts of stuff will happen randomly right so what we need to do is to block time for writing and block time for our research this is the only way that it's going to get done right so you know what i would ask you to do even now is just to pause this video go to your google or outlook calendar and start blocking time this week that you're going to spend on writing right now my Top tip number number four is to make those activities regular. What do I mean by that? Well, you know, I, for example, revise students' texts or my clients' texts every Tuesday and every Thursday between sort of 8 a.m. and midday, right, approximately. Why do I do that on Tuesday and Thursday? Well, that's kind of what works with my schedule and other things that I've got going on. And I just made it regular so that, you know, when I wake up on a Tuesday morning, I don't have to think what I'm supposed to be doing. I know because it's in my agenda, right? It's in my schedule and the same on Thursday. And it just becomes a habit, right? And if something is a habit, it's so much easier to, to do, right? Because you don't have to think about it. It's, it just becomes automatic, right? And it's also in your agenda, so nobody else can book anything during that time, you know, and it's time for your focused work. So try to make it regular, as regular as possible, right? Um, my tip number five would be also to try to schedule blocks of, you know, at least two hours, I would say, for one activity, right? And the, the reason for that is that, you know, it takes some time to kind of get into the flow of things, get into the zone. And if you only have like half an hour to do something or 40 minutes, it will be really difficult to even get started on that, right? Especially if you, you know, if you haven't done that thing for a, for a couple of days, right? So that's why I personally always schedule like at least two hours for one thing right this allows me to kind of sit down look at a blank piece of paper for a little while or maybe read what i've written before get my brain into the into the zone and then start writing and it gives me enough time to kind of to be in that flow of writing as well so that i can produce some meaningful work right so put things into into blocks of time so these are my top five tips for managing your time better so that you can write more research papers yourself. And if you enjoyed this video, then give it a like, subscribe so you don't miss future content. And if you wanna work with me more closely, then book a free one-to-one -one consultation session either with me or a member of my team. The link is right below this video. And in that session, we're going to jump and identify you know, the problems that you're currently struggling with pinpoint your goals and outline a personalized strategy for you that will help you to achieve those goals in the shortest possible time. And then if it sounds like it's a good fit, then we can talk further about how exactly we could work together and how we could help you. So the link to book that free one-to-one -one consultation is somewhere below this video. 